Adam. This is not we, First of all, I want to thank you uh, for being here this morning. You just saw some of the highlights from New York City Mayor Eric Adams' press conference that he held following his indictment. Now, predictably, it did not go too well, and there was even a point where it sounded like a right-winger was heckling him as well, along with the left-wing hecklers, but it was kind of hard to make out, so I didn't put it in that compilation. But needless to say, the entire event was a complete clusterfuck, which is appropriate because I'd say it's emblematic of Eric Adams' sad tenure as mayor. Now, we are going to go over the indictment, but first, I want you to remember Eric Eric Adams' disastrous interview with my friend Ole, who's a movement attorney on The Breakfast Club. Now, I'm reminding you of this because I want to show you her reaction to this news. <laughs> I love her so much. And this is turning out to be a really phenomenal year for haters. As this person put it on Twitter, Kendrick and Ole are tied for most successful haters this year. And I've got to say, out of all the shit posting and celebrating that I saw following this news, this tweet from Nate Silver that he made in 2022 is my favorite thing that went viral, where he says, it's probably foolish to think a NYC mayor will successfully translate into being a national political figure, but I still think Eric Adams would be in my top five for who will be the next Democratic presidential nominee after Joe Biden. Yeah, you're doing great, sweetie. I love the political analysis of Nate Silver. Listen, as David Dole put it, he's okay when it comes to numbers, but when it comes to just political commentary, I don't know what's going on in his brain, and I don't want to find out, but I've buried the lead for too long, so I do want to dive into the details so that way you know why Eric Adams is being indicted. The Washington Post explains, Mayor Eric Adams was charged Thursday with bribery, wire fraud and seeking illegal campaign donations, a years-long catalog of alleged crimes stemming from what prosecutors called his corrupt relationships with rich foreigners. A 57-page indictment unsealed in Manhattan federal court alleged that Adams, a Democrat, quote, sought and accepted improper valuable benefits such as luxury international travel, including from wealthy foreign business people and at least one Turkish government official seeking to gain influence over him. Prosecutors said those corrupt relationships began before Adams became mayor and continued after his rise in big city politics fueled in part by a criminal scheme to take expensive gifts of travel and hotel stays, as well as illegal campaign money. According to the indictment, after becoming mayor, Adams accepted requests from people who had illegally supported him and rebuffed those who fell short. So needless to say, this is very serious, and the indictment lays out quid pro quo corruption that is extremely brazen, like shockingly so. For example, the Turkish official who had bribed him before he was elected, well, he said after he was elected, hey, bud, you know, uh, it's time to pay the piper. And he demanded that Eric Adams use his power to speed up the opening of a new 36-story Turkish consular building so that way it would be ready in time for a visit by the Turkish president. Now, the problem is that it wasn't open because it failed a fire inspection. So the Turkish official basically said, look, I helped you get here. Now it's time that you take care of me. So what did he do? Eric Adams did exactly what he was asked by the person who bribed him. He threatened to fire the individual at the New York Fire Department if they didn't give the building a pass in their fire inspection. It's shocking. And they listened. They listened to Eric Adams. They complied. 
and the building was given a pass, even though it shouldn't have been given a pass. So we're talking about overt corruption here from Eric Adams, and this is just straight up bribery. And what's crazy to me is that our campaign finance system effectively already makes this kind of corruption legal in multiple ways. So if you can't even abide by our already lax and corrupt campaign finance laws, and you even break the laws that we have, it really speaks volumes to how corrupt you actually are. And to just show you how brazen his administration is, I want to share just one part from the indictment that was highlighted by Ellie Mastal on Twitter. Quote, the Adams staffer also agreed to speak with FBI agents and falsely denied the criminal conduct of herself and Adams, among others. At one point during her voluntary interview, the Adams staffer excused herself to the bathroom and, while there, deleted the encrypted messaging application she had used to communicate with Adams, the promoter, the Turkish official, the airline manager, and others. My God, can you imagine? You're being interviewed by the FBI and you're like, actually, can I go to the bathroom really quick? I've got to take a shit. And then you go in there and you delete the evidence. Who does that? Who does that? I'll tell you who does it. People who think that they can get away with it, right? But sometimes people in power are actually held minimally accountable. We'll see what happens if they're so brazen. It happens with Donald Trump, Eric Adams, Andrew Cuomo. Sometimes it happens when you are so goddamn brazen. And listen, this is a really big deal because Eric Adams is the first mayor of New York City to be indicted in office. And when you dive into the details, this really isn't shocking news given how cartoonishly corrupt his administration is. Now, in response, he's gone full Donald Trump expectedly, as one of the hecklers pointed out, and he is emphatically denying all of the charges being made. But the denial isn't necessarily what makes his response so Trumpian. It's the insinuation that this is a witch hunt because he's just so good at being a mayor. So listen to what he said, followed by CNN's reaction. He gave a statement to the New York Times tonight and said, and I'm quoting him now, I always knew that if I stood my ground for New Yorkers that I would be a target and a target I became. If I am charged, I am innocent and I will fight this with every ounce of my strength and spirit. Uh, New York City has had mayors for hundreds and hundreds of years, of course. He is the first one to be charged while sitting in office. So uh, that is sounds that like true? a stretch to me. He's the first one to ever be charged while sitting in office? He's the first. He laughed at the claim because what else can you do? It's so stupid and hyperbolic. And it makes you this hero who's being persecuted, this Jesus-type figure, when you're just a corrupt politician. That's all this is about. Now, what we're seeing here... Uh, with regard to his Trumpian politics is the impact that Trump has had on American politics, where politicians think that they can survive massive scandals like this by denying them and just waiting out the clock in hopes that they'll go away. But the Democrats who try to do this, like Bob Menendez, Henry Cuellar, Andrew Cuomo, and now Eric Adams, they don't realize that the standards for the Democratic Party's base are higher than the standards for the Republican Party's base, right? They're absolutely not high enough, in my opinion, but they don't have political cults surrounding them like Donald Trump, or at least not to the same extent as Trump has a cult of personality around him. So even though it works for Donald Trump, it's not going to work for these Democratic Party politicians. But that's the strategy that Eric Adams is deploying for the time being, at least. And the pressure is increasing for him to resign. But at his press conference, he insisted that he's not going anywhere. Is there any circumstance by which you would resign? No, the, no, listen, I'm here. I was elected by the people of the city over 700,000 strong. Amen. And by the people, for the people. This is a city, is a city that is extremely... Uh, resilient. This is a city uh, that have, we have gone through some difficult and hard times and we're going to continue uh, to move forward as a city. That's what that's shown. Now he just goes on to ramble and essentially filibuster, but he's not resigning. That's the point that he's making, at least for now. But what I do find interesting is that a lot of Republican influencers are now rallying around this Democrat. For example, Colin Rugg and Ashley St. Clair are commending him for his Trumpian response. Rob Smith is arguing that this is political, writing on Twitter. Eric Adams spoke out against the Biden administration's influx of illegal immigration, destroying NYC, and he was immediately targeted. And on top of that, New York Post promotes the same idea, that he is the target of a witch hunt by the Biden administration because he exposed Biden's migrant crisis. Sure. I mean, they're forgetting that Biden's own son was indicted by his Department of Justice and he was actually charged. But, you know, if it happens to a politician 
that they think is opposed to Joe Biden, then it's Joe Biden's fault because Joe Biden is simultaneously pulling all the levers of power. But at the same time, he's demented and he's not even doing anything. There's the deep state running the White House for him. It's just a contradiction and it's cope. So I hope that you're all noticing, though, that there is a pattern here. Whenever a bad person gets exposed, they immediately do a religious or right wing pivot in order to pander to conservatives who have no fucking standards. Before his downfall, Diddy, for example, started to get very religious, conspicuously religious, as if he knew something was down the pipeline. Also, after multiple women credibly accused Russell Brand of sexual assault, he suddenly became a born again uh, Christian. Isn't that weird? That's so convenient. You know, Jesus forgives, so maybe you'll forgive Russell Brand too, since he uh, he's following Jesus now. Okay, now Eric Adams is suddenly the target of a Biden administration witch hunt, just like Donald Trump, because he said immigration bad. What? Well, by that logic, wouldn't the Biden administration target Kamala Harris as well, since she's also effectively saying immigration bad? I mean, she doesn't engage in the demagoguery as much as other politicians, as much as Trump, but she still is supporting that right-wing border bill that Biden championed that was endorsed by Border Patrol. So wouldn't he go after her too? By that logic, it's just, it, it, there's no logic to it. It's all bullshit, right? Sometimes powerful people are actually held accountable, but since they think that they're above the law because they have power and or wealth, they cry conspiracy and make it seem like they're being politically persecuted because they're looking out for the little guys, right? And, you know, it, it, it'll be them and they're just standing in the way of you getting persecuted. It's just so fucking stupid. In actuality, they were in it for themselves all along. They don't give a fuck about the little guy. So I don't know if Eric Adams is gonna resign, but I think he should. But I mean, if you wanna know why so many leftists are celebrating his downfall, I will link you to Ole's video about him because she dives deep. And yes, it is nearly two hours long, but worth every single second. This man isn't just corrupt, but what he did in that state, the way that he has violated the human rights of people he's supposed to be protecting is absolutely egregious. So check it out and... uh Let's all celebrate together because I think that this is good news. Whenever a corrupt politician gets held accountable, I think that is worth celebrating because, you know, we do have a two-tier justice system, even though there are exceptions. This one being one of them, Bob Menendez and Donald Trump being another couple of them. But for the most part, poor people, working class people, they're never held to the same standard as politicians. So whenever it actually does happen, I think that is cause for celebration.